7.9. No plaque. Examining Cheetah 1502 at the clinic, everyone here is aware this healthy, dominant male is a symbol of hope for this species. He represents 16 years of our work here, I guess, and the fact that he's now going to be able to go back and maybe we'll be able to track even some of his family lines. Take a look. No, it's exciting to get to see them and know about them, and then follow them and have people who, on whose land they're living, getting to know them as well. The Cheetah Conservation Fund has made real progress in Namibia, building awareness among farmers that cheetahs are not necessarily their enemies. We know that cheetahs would prefer to have wildlife than livestock, and if you get to know your dominant male and he's not causing you any problem livestock-wise, then he's actually helping because he's keeping these other young males away. So the real question is, if they're going to coexist with cheetahs, how can farmers protect their livestock? That's the main focus of cheetah conservation here. Learning more about cheetahs and developing farm management practices that minimize losses to them. Solutions that are simple, cheap, and effective, like livestock guard dogs. These are Anatolian shepherds, a breed used in Turkey for thousands of years to protect sheep from wolves. They've been bred here at the demonstration farm for 12 years, and so far, more than 200 of these dogs have been placed with farmers to protect their livestock. Gephardt Nicanor manages the program, advising farmers on the dog's training and care, and following their progress. These dogs can grow very big, so when they are big, uh, they have a big back, and that can uh, keep the predators away, um, especially with cheetahs, because cheetahs are not as aggressive, as much as aggressive other predators. So. Uh, they don't want to be injured. From the time they're puppies, these dogs are raised with livestock, forming a bond with them. They're not bred to herd or move the stock, which can trigger a predator to attack, but instead to place themselves between the stock and the predator and to bark aggressively. <laughs> that kind of challenge is usually enough to make a cheetah move on, to find something less troubling to hunt. On the demonstration farm, Armas Alwingo has trained many guard dogs. Wherever the dog is walking, uh, we can see that the dog made a difference. Before, they used to have a lot of problems with uh, leopards and cheetahs. And today, wherever the dog is walking, uh, you know, those problems are minimized. In a recent study, nearly three quarters of Namibian farmers using these dogs reported large declines in livestock losses to predators. Joseph. One of them is Wolfgang Gasso. Joseph, come here, come here. On the far edge of his farm, an Anatolian shepherd has protected his herd of goats for several years. And we talk with him, and the goats are so well, and then we must say, um, Joseph, where's the goats? <laughs> Go on his, yeah. the way he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And in addition to dogs, some farmers have also found donkeys are effective in deterring predators. A cheetah might think twice before dealing with powerful kicks from a protective donkey. This is not a cheetah. Why? Vant, uh, if you look at the shape, mm -hmm. it's not oval form. Advisors from the Cheetah Conservation Fund also suggest other practices to farmers that will reduce their losses to cheetahs and other predators. Like using calving corrals to protect vulnerable young animals and electric fencing where possible. Farmers need to understand that cheetahs instinctively prefer wildlife to domestic livestock, but that very accessible and unprotected livestock may encourage a predator to become a problem animal. Farmers play a key role in developing problem predators when their livestock is unprotected. 
it's simple practices that oftentimes we forget about, practices that our, our grandfathers and great-great-great-grandfathers were doing when they lived on the land. And we've gotten a little bit away from that. And that's causing a lot of problems for our ecosystem and a lot of problems for the cheetah. Here in Namibia, the government and many farmers see the value of managing natural resources in a holistic way, combining crops, grazing, and wildlife management into integrated systems called conservancies, where landowners join together and find ways to manage their landscape for the benefit of all, including wildlife. At the demonstration farm, there's a pilot project that's a model for this concept. Clearing thick thorn bush covering vast areas of land and making a profit out of it. For decades, overgrazing and fire suppression have allowed encroaching thorn bush like this to spread uncontrolled over what was once open savanna. Large bush eaters like elephants, rhinos, and giraffes are no longer found on these farmlands so there are no natural controls on thornbush. These bushlands are not fit for grazing, neither for livestock nor wildlife. And for cheetahs, chasing prey through this bush is dangerous. The few animals that were actually catching livestock we found had some sort of a medical problem. Some of those medical problems were actually blinded in the eye. And we found that it was actually being scratched from running through the bush. The Cheetah Conservation Fund is using this project to open up habitat for more wildlife, including cheetahs. Thornbush is selectively harvested and chipped. Then it goes to a processing plant nearby to be heated and pressed into compacted logs for use as cooking fuel or home heating. Tons of this product are now shipped every month to markets in Europe, and the demand is growing. Long-lasting, low-emission fuel from a sustainable source, benefiting farmers and wildlife, and creating jobs. Farmers also profit from ecotourism, based on the abundance of wildlife on their land, and from premium prices for beef, marketed as a cheetah-friendly product. Innovative ideas like this have made a difference in Namibia, convincing many farmers that coexisting with wildlife is not only possible, but desirable, and cheetahs are coming back. But increasing numbers of cheetahs brings still more problems. If the farmers see more cheetahs, then all of a sudden they're thinking, oh, I'm going to have livestock loss. So right now we're doing a lot of hand-holding with farmers as they see more cheetahs. The recovery of cheetahs here is supported by the return of good rainfall after years of drought. That's brought an abundance of wildlife and the predators that feed on them. So as the cheetah follows the wildlife number increase, we will end up with a drought again and our wildlife numbers will decrease. With that, we're gonna have cheetah numbers decrease as well. And the most difficult challenge for cheetah conservation in Namibia still lies ahead. As more large commercial farms owned by whites are purchased and divided for resettlement by African families. That means many more people on the land, causing wildlife to scatter, leaving less prey for cheetahs and more reason to kill livestock for food. The same bleak prospects facing cheetahs elsewhere in Africa. Advisors here are training resettled farmers in the ways they can manage their land to allow coexistence with wildlife, especially cheetahs. Trying to change people's attitudes is rather difficult and may take a very long time. Try to uh, make, make the society see a, a cheetah as an asset and not just merely um, an animal that will destroy or cause harm to their property. We haven't got that yet, but we're working towards that. They're also working on projects in other countries where cheetahs can still be found, from Kenya and Ethiopia to Algeria and Iran, educating and persuading government officials and farmers to adopt the kind of land management practices that will allow cheetahs to survive. Well done. Number 1502's checkup is finished. He'll soon wake up, maybe with a slight headache, 
but with no recollection of all the sticking and probing in the clinic. Most important for this alpha male, he's going back to the same farm where he was captured. And the cat's got two options. One is he's gonna, we're gonna open it and he's gonna go straight out. Okay, I've got it, this is good. I would say right about here is fine, so here we go. Okay. There he goes. That was it, well that was nice. It's just one cheetah, but he represents hope for his entire species. There's good reason to believe cheetahs are recovering here in this southwestern corner of Africa, but they could soon disappear completely in most other areas where they're now just barely surviving. And yet, as we've seen, saving cheetahs across their entire range may still be possible if we can only accept the idea that we really can live together. That's our report. I'm Gary Stryker. Thanks for watching.